In this video, we're going to review the unit circle and some basic trig identities. The values we need to know for the unit circle are going to be based on these two special triangles. So you should remember from geometry that if you have a 30, 60, 90 triangle, the ratio of the lengths of the sides is 1 to 2 to radical 3. While if you have a special 45, 45, 90 triangle, the, the ratio of the lengths of the sides is 1 to 1 to radical 2. Now in the unit circle, we want to have a hypotenuse of length 1. So we'll just divide all of these lengths by the length of the hypotenuse. In the 30, 60, 90 triangle, we'll divide all of the lengths by 2. In the 45, 45, 90 triangle, we'll divide all of the lengths by radical 2. So the triangles that we want to remember are going to have lengths 1, 1 half, root 3 over 2, for the 30, 60, 90 triangle. And for the 45, 45, 90 triangle, the lengths we want to remember are 1, root 2 over 2, and another root 2 over 2. The other thing that we want to remember is that in calculus, we are going to almost exclusively use radians when we measure angles. So we should learn that 30, degrees is pi over 6 radians, 60 degrees is pi over 3 radians, and 45 degrees is pi over 4. Just remember that pi radians is 180 degrees. So now let's look at the unit circle. It's called a unit circle because its radius is 1. And the way we derive the sine and the cosine function is we say, all right, let's sweep an angle of theta radians. And we're going to define theta, or the radian measure, as the length of the arc that is subtended by that angle theta. So the length of this arc is t, and that's going to be exactly the same as theta radians. We have an initial point here on the x-axis. The terminal point is going to have coordinates x comma y, and we're going to define cosine to be or cosine of theta, cosine of t, the same thing as being the x-coordinate, and sine of theta will be the y-coordinate. We should also remember the names of the different quadrants. We have four quadrants Divide it, the axes divide up the plane into four parts. Each part is called a quadrant. And we number them starting with the quadrant where x and y are both positive. So that would be quadrant one. And then we go around counterclockwise. So we get count quadrant two, quadrant three, and quadrant four. Once we have a definition for sine and cosine, we can define tangent of theta as the ratio of sine of theta over cosine of theta. Then cotangent of theta is the reciprocal of tangent of theta, or cosine of theta over sine theta. We have two other functions. We have the secant function. Secant of theta is defined as the reciprocal of cosine of theta. And cosecant of theta 
is the reciprocal of sine theta. It's useful for us to think about uh, what about the mirror image of our terminal point? And I mean mirror image in the across the origin. So if I have a terminal point here and I look across, so rotating it through pi radians or 180 degrees, what uh, pattern do I recognize? Well, I should recognize from similar triangles that the uh, value or the absolute value of the x coordinate and the y coordinate doesn't change, but the sign changes. So whatever x coordinate I have here, I have its opposite. Whatever y coordinate I have here, then going through 180 degrees, I get the opposite. And so that would tell me that in the unit circle, if I rotate through pi, that's just like adding pi to my original angle, the result will, I'll, I will take the opposite of the original value of sine. And the same thing with cosine. If I add or subtract pi from uh, cosine, uh, from my angle theta, then the value of cosine for the new angle is just going to be the opposite of cosine of theta. Now with uh, tangent and cotangent, there's two ways we can look at it. One is that we could remember that the period of tangent theta and cotangent theta is pi radians. So of course, after pi radians, we get the same value again. The other way we could look at it is to say that, well, when I go through 180 degrees this way, um, both sine and cosine change their sine. So they're either going to be both um, there. So that means that the ratio is going to stay the same. If the original ratio was originally negative, then the new ratio is going to be negative. If the original ratio is positive, then the new ratio will be positive. All right, some other important identities. Uh, one, we have our Pythagorean identities. And really that just comes from the fact that the equation of the circle unit circle is x squared plus y squared equals one. So then cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta will equal one. And if I divide every term in this equation, by cosine squared theta, then sine squared theta over cosine squared theta will give me tangent squared theta. Cosine squared theta over itself will give me one. And one over cosine squared theta is secant squared theta. I could also get another identity, but it's not commonly used by dividing every term here by sine squared theta. The angle sum formulas are not used quite as much, but they're helpful in remembering the uh, double angle formulas. And so um, I guess the other thing that would be important to remember is that when we're looking at double angle formulas for cosine, uh, we actually wind up having the opposite. If we have cosine a plus b, then in the middle of these two terms, I have a minus if I had cosine of a minus b, I'd have a plus. But with sine, it's always the same, plus then plus or minus then minus. Now, one thing that we do use a lot are these double angle formulas. So sine of two theta is two sine theta cosine theta. And you can derive this if you know the angle sum formula, if you just let uppercase a equal uppercase b equals theta. So if both a and b are theta, you'll get this double angle formula. And the same thing with the double angle formula for cosine. If you go to the sum formula and you say a equals theta, b equals theta, that'll give you a cosine of two theta, and then you'll get cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta. Now I can 
go ahead and replace my minus sine squared theta with cosine squared theta minus one. That's just comes from rearranging the Pythagorean identity. And then I'll get a new identity, cosine of two theta equals, let me go ahead and write that out, cosine of two theta equals two cosine squared theta minus one. And then if I were to replace cosine squared theta with one minus sine squared theta, and I'll get a third identity for cosine of two theta. That's one minus two sine squared theta. So we use these identities a, a lot. Um, and then finally, we should remember the symmetric properties. Now remember cosine, if you look at the graph of y equals cosine theta, it's symmetric with respect to the y-axis. Uh, so it's actually an even function. Whereas the graph of y equals sine theta is symmetric with respect to the origin. And so it is an odd function. So I'm sure that many times when you were studying trigonometry or pre-calculus or maybe a different subject, you were given a diagram like this, which shows the unit circle and the important values that we want to remember from it. And I see this as, yikes, information overload. My concern is that uh, it's great. If you know this, then fantastic. I'm glad that you, you probably discovered some pattern or uh, some method for remembering this, some system to be able to have it stick in your brain, which is great. But I know for a lot of students, they memorize it just for a quiz or maybe a test, and then it's gone. They don't remember any of it. So what I'd like to do is propose a system that we could use to help us remember these values based on those special triangles. So what I'm going to do is break these values into four separate groups. The first group are going to be the angles, which when written using radians, are a fraction of pi with denominator four. That is our first group. The second group are going to be the fractions or the angles, which when written with radians, are fractions of pi with denominator three. The third group will be the angles, which when written using radians are fractions of pi with denominator six. And finally, the last group is gonna be the angles that are on the vertices or the intercepts, the X and Y intercepts of the unit circle. So instead of looking at the entire unit circle, let's start by looking at these angles whose denominator is four. Now, notice that these angles actually bisect the axes. And let's just focus on those angles. So those again are the multiples of uh, pi or fractions of pi with denominator four. And uh, I already said that the these angles uh, bisect the 90 degree angle of the axis. So they're 45 degrees or pi over four. Hey, we remember that. And so then we can use our special triangle for 45, 45, 90. And so the takeaway is 
that both sine and cosine are going to be either root 2 over 2 or negative root 2 over 2. So I do have to have some of this picture in my mind because I have to be able to think, okay, if I'm given 5 pi over 4, what quadrant is that in? Without having to look this up on a diagram. What quadrant is 3 pi over 4 in? What quadrant is 7 pi over 4 in? So let's see if we can practice this. So cosine of 3 pi over 4. So I know that there's going to be a root 2 over 2. The only question I have to, rem or the only thing I have to remember is, is this going to be a negative or positive? Well, in quadrant 2, the x-coordinate is negative. So this is going to be negative root 2 over 2. All right, sine of 7 pi over 4. So I'll need to remember that 7 pi over 4 is in quadrant 4. And in the fourth quadrant, y is negative, And the y-coordinate represents the sine value. So again, this will be a negative root 2 over 2. Tangent of 5 pi over 4, well, that's going to be sine over cosine. So 5 pi over 4, back in the third quadrant, both of them are negative. So I'd have negative root 2 over 2 over negative root 2 over 2. And that's just going to give me positive 1. And so for all of these angles here, where the denominator is 4, tangent of that angle is going to be either plus 1 or or minus 1. It'll be plus 1 in quadrants 1 and 3, where x and y have the same sign, and in quadrants 2 and 4, where x and y have different signs. Tangent of those angles will be negative 1. And the same idea with cotangent. So cotangent of 7 pi over 4, from what I just said, should be negative 1. All right, so again, let's see if we can break this down with our second group. Our second group are those angle measures whose denominator, they're a fraction of pi, and the denominator is 3. So let's focus on those. And if we recall, pi over 3 is 60 degrees. And so from uh, basic uh, geometry and arithmetic, we can use a 30, 60, 90 triangle to remember the values. So remember, in the 30, 60, 90 triangle, the long side or the long leg is root 3 over 2, and the short leg is 1 half. So those are the two values I have to remember. Now, with these particular angles, whose denominator is 3, Notice that the angles really are adjacent to the y-axis. And so the y-coordinate is always going to be either root 3 over 2 or negative root 3 over 2. And the x-coordinate is either going to be a half or minus a half. Now, I don't have to remember all of the things that I just said there. What I need to remember is long side, root 3 over 2, short side, half. If the denominator is 3, I'm adjacent to the y-axis. If I can remember those, then I can answer the questions. So for example, cosine of 5 pi over 3. I still have to remember what quadrant I'm in. So 5 pi over 3 is in quadrant 4. Uh, the x-coordinate is positive, and it's the short bit, so it's going to be a half. Sine of 2 pi over 3, that's quadrant 2. Uh, sine will be the y-coordinate, so it'll be positive. And it's the long bit, so that's going to be root 3 over 2. Now, tangent of pi over 3, I'm going to have to make a ratio here. So uh, it's going to be sine over cosine. Sine is the long one, so it'll be root 3 over 2. 
over cosine, the short one, one half, and that's going to simplify to root three. All right, uh, and then secant of four pi over three. Well, I have to think of that as being the reciprocal of cosine of four pi over three. Now, 4 pi over 3 is in the third quadrant where everything is negative. So um, that's going to be 1 over negative 1 half. And 1 half because it's the short leg there. And so that'll give me negative 2. All right, back to the whole unit circle. Let's see if we can break it down again to the angles when whose measure when written in radians is a fraction of pi with a denominator of six. So if we just focus on those angles, we notice that again, well, uh, these angles are going to be adjacent to the x-axis. And so uh, we will use our 30, 60, 90 triangle again. And still, the short side is a half, and the long side is root 3 over 2. But for these angles where the denominator is 6, it's going to be the x-coordinate, which is long, and the y-coordinate is short. So let's start with another tangent. Tangent, I'm going to have to think of a sine over cosine. Sine is the short one, so it's going to be 1 half. Cosine is the long one, so root 3 over 2. And so here I'm going to get um, 1 over root 3, which is root 3 over 3. So for these angles, which are either 30 or 60 degrees, so the ones that have a denominator of 6 or a denominator of 3. Um, we can pretty much say if you have a denominator of 6, it's going to be either plus or minus root 3 over 3. And if you have a denominator of 3, it's going to always be plus or minus radical 3. And one is small and one is big, and you just have to remember, OK, well, if the y is big, then it's got to be radical 3. So if the y is bigger than the x, but if the x is bigger than the y, it's going to be 1 over radical 3, or root 3 over 3. All right, uh, cosine of 5 pi over 6. That's my x coordinate. Uh, so it'll be the longer side. And it's negative, so negative root 3 over 2. Cosecant to 7 pi over 6, well, that's going to be 1 over sine of 7 pi over 6. Sine is my y coordinate, so it's going to be plus or minus a half. And 7 pi over 6 is in the third quadrant, so this is going to be 1 over negative a half, which equals negative 2. And then sine of 11 pi over 6, that's in the fourth quadrant. It'll be the y-coordinate, which is going to be the smaller value, and it will be negative, so negative 1 half. And then the last group are going to be the x and y intercepts. And hopefully we don't have to spend too much time thinking about this. Uh, we start at 0, where cosine is 1 and sine is 0. Go to pi over 2, so along the y-axis. It would make sense that the x value is now 0. So cosine is 0 at pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. But sine is either 1 or negative 1. And then at pi, cosine of pi is negative 1, but sine of pi 
is zero. So cosine of pi being negative one, we see that a lot in this class. Sine of pi over two being one, we see that. Tangent of pi over two is going to be sine over cosine. But the problem is, is that uh, cosine is zero there. So that's actually undefined. And tangent of pi, uh, well, I'll have zero on the top and negative one on the bottom. And so that's just going to be zero. So tangent of pi is zero, tangent of zero is zero. So let's apply some of these identities uh, and some of the basic definitions to be able to answer some uh, questions. So suppose I'm given that the cosine of an angle is negative four over five. Now, this is not any of the angles that appear on the uh, unit circle that we just learned about. So we're going to have to use uh, some different information to be able to answer this question. Uh, and we're told that theta is in the third quadrant. Okay, so that tells me that both the x and the y coordinate are going to be negative. So find the values of the remaining five trig functions. Well, I could use, uh, so for example, I could use cosine of squared of theta plus sine squared theta equals one, and I could find sine. And that's, uh, there's nothing wrong with doing that. But what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to use some I'm going to use some triangle trigonometry. And I'm going to think cosine theta is going to be uh, adjacent over hypotenuse. Oh, and I don't even need to do this. I've already drawn it. So I'm going to think of uh, having an angle of theta. And I'm going to, for the moment, I'm not going to look at the negative. I'm just going to say, oh, okay, let me look at this reference angle theta, where the adjacent is 4 and the hypotenuse is 5. So I'm kind of, for the moment, not thinking about the, uh, the angle here. And I can see that in my original page, I had a typo. Let me go back and change that. And my original page says that I'm in quadrant three, but no, I actually want this question to be in quadrant two. Okay, got that fixed. So now we can go back to looking at the triangle that I drew. And I said that this is going to be uh, in quadrant two. So in quadrant two, x will be negative, but y will be positive. And so I'm just going to use the Pythagorean theorem on this triangle to find that the value of y is three. And so that must mean that the sine of theta is going to be 3 over 5. And so once I know sine and cosine, I can find tangent by just looking at the ratio. So I'll get 3 fifths, positive 3 fifths over negative 4 fifths. That'll give me negative 3 fourths. So once I know sine and cosine, I can calculate the remainder. Now all I need are the reciprocals. If I take the reciprocal of sine, I get cosecant. So cosecant of theta will be 5 third. If I take the reciprocal of tangent, I get cotangent. So cotangent of theta will be negative 4 thirds. And then if I take the reciprocal of cosine, which was given as negative 4 fifths, I'll get the secant of theta, which will be negative 5 fourths. So we have an equation in the next example. 
find all solutions to sine of 2x equals cosine of x in the interval from negative 2 pi to positive 2 pi. So how are we going to go about this? Well, let's start with our equation. And I have a double angle here. So let's use our double angle identity. I'll replace sine of 2x with 2 sine of x times cosine of x. Now here is where we can run into trouble. We have to be very careful here. We cannot divide both sines by cosine of x. Why? Because cosine of x could be 0. And if cosine of x is 0, well, I can't divide by 0. Division by 0 is undefined. Well, what do I do? Well, let's make one side equal 0. So I'll subtract cosine of x from each side. And then I'll factor out the cosine of x. And now I have two factors, two numbers, whose product is 0. So let's remember. We have to have that zero there because we have a zero products property, which says that if you have the product of two or more numbers and the product is zero, so it only works for zero, then at least one of those numbers is zero. And this is how we solve equations by factoring. So then either the first number is zero or the second number is zero. But I went ahead and did some algebra 2 sine of x minus 1 equaling 0. That's the same thing as sine of x equaling 1 half. All right, so sine of x equaling 1 half. Uh, let's come to that second. Let's do the cosine of x equals 0. So that's where's the x equal to 0. That's anywhere on the y-axis. So that would be either pi over 2 or 3 pi over 2. So that's just between 0 and 2 pi. But then I could remember uh, that I had that the fact that cosine is even. So that would say that if cosine of pi over 2 is 0, then cosine of negative pi over 2 is 0. And if cosine of 3 pi over 2 is 0, then cosine of negative 3 pi over 2 is 0. And so I just use that even property of the cosine function. Now sine of x equaling 1 half. So at this point, I should be thinking, OK, if I have a unit circle over here, and my y coordinate is a half, that would give me points here and here. Uh, not there, because then y would be negative. So those are the ones that are angles that would be adjacent to the x-axis. Those are the ones that uh, have a denominator of 6. So x would be pi over 6 or 5 pi over 6. Uh, and I don't have this nice even property. A sine is an odd function. So I'm just going to remember that the period for uh, the sine function is 2 pi. So if I just subtract pi over 6 minus 2 pi, that's pi over 6 minus um, 12 over 6 pi which is negative 11 over 6 pi. So that's how I get ne negative 11 pi over 6. And then if I take 5 minus 12, I'll get negative 7 pi over 6. And again, I just use the fact that um, the period of uh, the sine function is 2 pi. In our third example, we're going to find all solutions to cosine of 2 theta equals sine of 2 theta. 
and this is all solutions. So I'm not limiting uh, to a specific interval. So the entire real line is where I'm looking for solutions. So let's start by using an identity, a double angle formula for cosine of two theta. Now there are three of them and I'm going to choose the one that has only the sine squared theta in it. The one minus two sine squared theta uh, equals sine of theta. Now why did I do that? Well because I'm going to always have a, a, a one here or I'm going to have a cosine squared theta and a sine squared theta and so solving that uh, algebraically would be challenge but if I only have sine theta or sine squared theta then there's a chance I could use either factoring or the quadratic formula to solve this as a quadratic type equation. So if I set one side equal to zero, which I need to do whether I'm using factoring or the quadratic formula, then I could think about maybe making a u substitution and thinking of this as being two u squared plus u minus one, which I could factor. Uh, I've got two u and u I want to have a plus one and a minus one. So if it helps to replace the sine of theta with u and perform the algebra there, that's fine. Go ahead and do that. In fact, uh, you know, the more work you show, the better off you are. Uh, but you may be able to just think of this as a quadratic equation in sine theta and factor it just using the sine theta directly. And that's what I did. And then again, it has to equal zero because we'll use the zero products uh, property of real numbers. And so that means either the first product or the first number is zero, which will give me sine of theta equals one half, or sine of theta is going to be negative one if the second factor equals zero. So we just looked at sine of theta equaling one half. Uh, that happens in the unit circle when the angle is adjacent to the x-axis. It has to be the positive values, so the first quadrant or the second quadrant. And so that's going to give me either pi over six plus two pi k. And I have to say two pi k because we have a period of two pi. Or over in the second quadrant, we have 5 pi over 6 plus 2 pi k. And then if sine of theta equals negative 1, well, that uh, only occurs actually at one point. That is at uh, 3 pi over 2. So again, we can add any multiple, integer multiple of 2 pi uh, to that to get another solution. So our solutions are pi over 6 plus 2 pi k, 5 pi over 6 plus 2 pi k, 3 pi over 2 plus 2 pi k, where k is any integer.